Welcome to The Painting Coach, where today I'm going to show you how to do a Kraken paint job. Get it? It's High Fleet Kraken. I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. But fair word of warning, the title of this video is accurate. Don't do this for all of your tyrannies. It will drive you insane. Now, what I'll do is I'll pick out the bits I'll leave off if I was doing my normal tyrannids. However, for all your big character monster bugs, this is the one you want. So let's get painting. The first thing I've done is I've primed the model using white bone from Colorforge. If you haven't got Colorforge where you are, you can use wreath bone from Citadel. Nice and easy. And the other thing I've done is I've left the head and the arms, I guess they're arms, four of them, uh, all separate as well, because that's going to make it easier to paint. The first thing we're going to do is paint the carapace, and the colour we're going to use for this is corn red, which is a nice dark rich red. And we're going to paint all of the carapace, so we've got all the cover on the head, and we've got all the armour on the body as well. If you're not sure, check the box art, obviously that's in the Leviathan scheme, but it'll tell you what hard plates you need to paint. Next up, we're going to base all of the claws and those scything talons. And the colour we're going to use for this is black. Now, I'm using AK black. You can use whatever black you use. If you've got a bad and black, that's absolutely fine. All we're going to do is just make sure that we paint them. So take your time with this. I mean, we are going to go back and tidy up any mistakes we've made. Uh, so it's not critical. But obviously, the less mistakes we make, the easier it is to paint later on. We need to do a little bit of wet blending on the sharp blades coming out of the head carapace. Uh, so I've sort of painted half of them without corn red. I'm going to paint the second half with a bad and black or with uh, AK black, whichever one you're using. Uh, now, there's not going to be a transition at the moment, but I'll show you how to work that on the next stage. We'll do a quick bit of wet blending here. And all I'm going to do is put a little bit of AK black whilst it's wet. Then I'm going to take some corn red. I'm just going to brush them into each other. Uh, and if I need to, I'll clean the brush off. I'll add a little bit more corn red until I'm fairly happy with the transition. Just work it back and forth. It doesn't have to be perfect because in the next step, we're going to really darken everything down. I'm really, really enjoying using speed paint at the moment. So I'm going to use grim black and some speed paint medium to shade all of the red carapace areas. So essentially, this is going to be one part grim black to three parts of the um, speed paint medium. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this all over the red carapace. And this is going to flow into those recesses really, really nicely. Don't worry too much if it goes blotchy because we are going to work it back to a red and then we'll go to some quite extreme highlights with it as well. And it's all very straightforward, uh, but you just want to make sure you've got everything covered. And again, try your best not to get this onto the lighter colour. When that's completely dry, it's time to bring that red carapace back. And the colour we're going to use is corn red, but we are going to dry brush this. And I'm using a square brush. And the reason I'm using a square brush is because I want to simulate some of those streaks that you see when you look at the texture along that carapace. So make sure you clean your brush off. You've not got too much corn red in there. And then we're going to brush in the direction of the plate. So when it comes to the head, we're going to brush to the back of the head. Now, what you're going to do as you work your way through this is you're really going to build up that texture and build up that corn red. And it's going to look great once you've finished. Next, we'll start to highlight the carapace. And the first colour we're going to use is Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a nice bright red, much brighter than the corn red we've got underneath. And the key here is to make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and you've got a really good point. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to streak this towards the edge of each plate. So... You can see on the head where we've got the plates overlapping each other, we're just going to streak the paint back in nice sharp lines. We're also going to highlight the edges of any sharp bone, and we're going to do that using the edge of the brush. We're just going to pull it along those edges to make sure that we've got a nice crisp edge highlight on there. So this texture is really starting to build up quite nicely. The next highlight we're going to do is with Wild Rider Red, which is a little bit of an orangey red. We're going to do exactly the same thing as we did in the previous stage, except we're going to make sure to keep that Wild Rider Red inside the Evil Sun Scarlet from the previous step. So we're not going to make these streaks and lines as long, or we're not going to make them as numerous either. So just take your time with this, work your way around, getting those nice little bits of texture onto the carapace. And when it comes to those sharp edges, again, exactly the same, a little bit on your brush, and just pull it around those really, really sharp edges leaving it inside the evil sun scarlet to give the impression that it's really nice and sharp the last highlight we're going to do is with luganeth orange now this is a much brighter highlight and we are going to use this very very sparingly so make sure you haven't got too much on your brush make sure you've got a good tip 
And what we're looking for here are those parts of the armor where there's damage or there's raised ridges. And we're just going to do a very nice thin line along those areas. The other thing we're going to do with this is we're going to just highlight around the outside of some of the armor plates. But we're not going to do this in a continuous highlight. We're going to do this just by tapping the brush along so it's a little bit of a jagged highlight. And that's going to look really nice and really help the armor plate stand out when you're looking at it from afar. And it's going to create some really nice points of interest on the model for you. We'll highlight all of the black claws next and that black horn coming out of the head. So the first thing we need to do is take a nice dark grey. Now I'm using German grey from AK Interactive. If you haven't got German grey, you can use something like Eschen grey from Citadel. Or you can mix black and white together. Just make sure it's a very dark grey. And essentially what we're going to look to do is highlight these parts of the model by dragging the brush towards the sharpest point. As this is where we want the lightest highlight. This is where we want it to build up. So work your way around the horn on the head and also all of the scything talons and the claws and the hoofs on the miniature as well. And that's going to look really nice and subtle at this point. The first bright highlight we'll do is with Dawnstone. And we want to keep this line very, very thin. So make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush and make sure you've got a really good tip as well. When it comes to the scything talons and the horns, we're just going to pull this towards the sharpest point as that's where we want the brightest part of this to be. But again, we're making sure we keep it inside the German grey and we're using it very, very sparingly. When it comes to some of the texture on the scything talons, it's really important to paint this exactly the same way you painted the red carapace. So just small dashes of Dawnstone and that will really help to build up the texture as we move into the final highlight next. That final highlight is going to be with Administratum Grey and again, use this fairly, fairly sparingly because we don't want to run the risk of putting too much over the bits that we've just finished because it'll really affect the outcome and we want this to look really sharp in terms of the highlights and also when it comes to those scything talons we want this to look really sharp in terms of building some of that texture up and also taking our time building this up roughly from about a third of the way back so from the tip of the scything talon back to about a third we want to paint this towards the tip because that's where we want to deposit the most amount of paint all right, it's time to paint all of these throbbing brains that this Norn emissary has. So the first thing we need to do is base everything using a bright white paint. Now I'm using bold titanium white from Procryl. You use exactly what white you prefer. So take your time not to spill this on any of the red parts. We're just going to work our way around. And there are quite a lot of brains on this uh, particular model. So there's two in the head, three in the head, uh, and also the ones that go down the spine as well. The other thing I'm going to do while I've got the white out is I'm going to paint those tendrils as well because I want them to have a nice psychic glow too. When that white paint is completely dry, it's time to paint the brains. And the colour I'm going to use for this is Plasma Bolt from the Army Painter Speed Paint range, which is a lovely, lovely colour. So all you need to do is just paint this over the brains. You can see it flows beautifully into those recesses and gives you a little bit of a highlight as well. If you have only got Citadel paints, then something like Ethermatic Blue will give you a similar effect. To paint these tendrils, first off, I've mixed that plasma bolt with one part plasma bolt to four parts speed paint medium. So it's very, very thin and hardly any color at all. And I'm going to paint the entirety of these tendrils. I'm then going to let that dry. When the tendrils are completely dry, it's time to start to build up this plasma bolt color. And I want this to be really focused towards the back of these tendrils. So I'm going to start painting with exactly the same mix. So it's four parts medium to one part uh, plasma bolt. I'm going to paint from halfway all the way back. I'm pulling the paint towards the back of the tendrils because that's where I want most of it to settle. You will have to keep an eye here just to make sure that you don't put too much on so that it really pools badly. Once that's totally dry, I'm then going to build up the plasma bolt right towards the tips of those tendrils. And I'm probably just going to focus on using this the back third and then once that's completely dry, I'm just going to add some pure plasma bolt to the right at the bottom just to really enhance the effect we're going for. And I'm really, really happy with how this has come out. We'll give the brains a little bit of a highlight. And this is very easy. All we need to do is just take some bright white paint. Again, I'm on my Pro Acryl uh, Bold Titanium White. So make sure I haven't got too much on your brush. And you just want to paint this around some of those raised areas of the brain making sure that you focus just on the middle. So no, we're not doing all of it, just the bits that go down the middle, and this will give it a nice glowing effect that will look great. All right, once we've got all that done, let's go back to the skeleton and tidy it up with some wraith bone if you need to. 
Now we're going to get that nice brownie effect on the skeleton. And the color we're going to use for that is again from the Army Painter Speed Paint Range. It's Pallid Bone. We're going to mix this one part Pallid Bone to three parts Contrast Medium. And that's because I don't want it to pull too heavily. I want to be able to control and build up the layers of this to get the coverage that I want. And you can see by adding this on, it's very thin, but straight away it starts to tint the model towards that brownie skeleton colour that we associate with High Fleet Kraken. So paint this all over and let it dry completely. We'll then come back and start to add some more layers. We'll add some more layers of that pallid bone and the speed paint medium just to where we want to get things darker. So I'm thinking around the tops of the arms. I'm thinking around the tops of the thighs as well and maybe part of that tail where it all kind of goes into the pelvic area. And also on those side in talon claws, the front of those claws is going to be a lot darker than the back. So we're just going to work that on there and start to build up that layer. Once that's completely dry to further darken the front of those talons, we're going to take some wood brown. Again, we're going to thin this with the speed paint medium. We're going to thin this probably three parts medium to one part paint. And we're just going to focus on the front part of where the talon and the arm actually join. Now, if you haven't got this color, you could probably use something like Wildwood from Citadel. You might need to thin it down a little bit more. And similarly, for all that skeleton carapace that you've done, you can actually use skeleton hoard. But again, you'll probably need to put one-to-one -one skeleton hoard at contrast medium to get the effect and be able to build it up nicely. So with all that done, it's time to start detailing up the model a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is the mouth. So I've taken some Volupus pink from Citadel. And I'm just painting this into the mouth. I'm also painting it around the teeth as well because it'll flow into those little recesses where you'll have gums. Just be careful not to spill this onto some of the brighter colours of the model. Back in the day when I used to play, and I'm talking 5th edition here, Tyrannids all used to have poisonous barbs on their tails, so I thought, why not do this one the same? So all I've done is I've taken some Gilly Dew and I've painted the majority of these bulbous parts on the tail with the Gilly Dew. Before that dries, I've taken some Orc Flesh and I've painted this just in the top, and I'm letting them just run into each other and blend in nicely. I'll also take a little bit of that Gilly Dew and just pop it onto the tail and blend it back towards those bulbous parts to give the impression of a poisonous tip. Now, there are numerous fleshy parts on this model, and I wanted to do them a slightly different colour than just leaving them the bone. So the first thing I need to do is go around and base them all using Corax White. So you can use any white you want. I'm using Corax White because it covers really well, so I will only have to do one coat. And in terms of these fleshy areas, there's a lot on the model. So you've got those funnels coming off the top of the carapace. You've got all the fleshy bits and ligaments uh, along the sides of the arms and the fingers. So just make sure you paint all of these using that Corax White. Now, I want these parts to look quite fleshy. So I'm going to take some Warrior Flesh, which is kind of a dark flesh tone. And it's quite equivalent to Gulliman Flesh from Citadel, if you've got that. And very easy step. I'm just going to paint this into those areas and it'll flow into the recesses giving you a nice shade and highlight and obviously don't forget the fleshy bits of skin around some of the knee areas and also around that pelvis as well so this color is quite dark which means it won't go too far from the scheme but it does give a little bit of differentiation to look at with all that done we can start to highlight the model so we're going to use some pallid witch flesh now we're not going to go overboard with this and spend hours highlighting. We're just going to focus on those areas that are going to catch the most light. So we've got these two blades that are coming out to the side of the head. And we've also got some sharp ridges on some of the hands and the side in talons that we're going to paint. And just, you know, take your time with this. You don't have to do too much. Just work your way around and do what you feel happy with. When it comes to highlighting the tail, I'm going to use a round dry brush, just again with some pallid witch flesh. And the reason I'm using the round dry brush is it'll just be a little bit of a smoother transition if I was going to try and layer this on. Again, this is just to speed this particular section up a little bit. For the head, I'm going to highlight the edge of those blades with a little bit of titanium white paint, again from Procryl. I've got a bit too much on my brush for this, but it's not so bad. I'm also going to paint the teeth and I'm also going to paint the eyeballs, being very careful not to get this over uh, the Volupus pink I've already got there. For that poisonous barb on the tail, I'm going to take some Flash Kids yellow and just pop a little bit of this around it. So any little bits of knobbles that we've got sticking out, I'm going to paint those. And I'm also going to build this into working around some of the, the shapes and the bulbous nature, pinning some semicircles just to give that extra bit of pop to that area. Next up, we need to paint some of that mottling, and this is a really easy step to do. So first off, we'll take some dried bark, we've thinned it down a little bit, 
and we're just basically going to paint lots of little dots across the miniature now take your time with this it's always better to put a little bit on and then come back to add more if you want it i'm just varying the size between some big dots some little dots and what's really important is to make sure that when you've got these dots that they don't look too scraggly so if you do do one and it looks a little bit like a line you can maybe just work around it a little bit uh, better as you can see we're also doing this along the tops of those thighs and down the tail uh, and this is going to look really nice and effective on the tabletop it's a really easy technique to do but you get some great payback from it painting the eyes is really easy we're just going to take a little bit of plasma bolt and paint that over the white that we put in there previously and this will flow into the recesses give you nice glowing eyes now i did just briefly want to show you how i did some parts of the base so all of the fleshy bits of base i've painted that with moon lake coral now once i've painted it on there you can see it's very powerful and very thick so i have cleaned my brush had a little bit of water on it and just wiped this over those areas to help it flow into the recesses uh, and also take away from the top parts which will give that nice fleshy effect when that's completely dry i took a mix of 50 50 pallid witch flesh and emperor's children which is a pink color and i just highlighted around some of those fleshy parts to give a nice effect so there we go that's the painting done let's have a look at it on the turntable so there you have it there was quite a little bit of work involved in this tutorial but i think you'll agree the result is great and i'm really really happy with it i'm not tempted to paint too many more kraken miniatures but for me this looks absolutely fantastic and on the tabletop it'll look great now i'm sure that you're really really keen to see a simple way of doing this so i've got this very very short tutorial here that you can watch that shows you how to paint the rest of highly kraken very easily Otherwise, I really appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.